Hey guys, it's Sam and this is my spoilery gush for Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. As I said, this video will have spoilers in it, so if you have not read this book, I would check out my spoiler free review, which is linked on the screen. So like I said in my review, I don't really care about the world. Uh, I'm just in it for the characters, but I will talk a little bit about the world stuff. Um, so <laughs> the, uh, the Prince of Hell plotline is so... I don't care. Like, how is Cassie able to make, like, really fun characters, but have her villains be, like, so incompetent and worthless? Like, the fact that a teenager has stabbed this Prince of Hell twice, um, and it's all, all it's gonna take. In the last book, he's gonna probably get killed because she's gonna stab him again. Like, I, I just... This is, this is giving very predictable to me. Uh, and the fact that we brought in Lilith who is kind of in the world talked about as like not being that big of a deal. Like she's the mother of like warlocks and stuff. Um, but, and like downworlders and some of that stuff. And, and you know, Lilith is like the mother of demons, but she just like comes in, gets shot with a magical gun, disappears. And like, yes, Cordelia is tied to her and like whatever, which I, I knew that there was something. I didn't think it would be Lilith, but um, when she meets like Waylon and he immediately makes her a paladin, I was like, girl, <laughs> You know something shady's going on here, right? Like, come on. Uh, but I was like, whatever. I mean, it's. I think it's cool that she has powers. I'm actually kind of like psyched that she's like Lilith's paladin. Embrace that girl, that's fun. <laughs> that's cool. I mean, I know it goes against her, like, I'm a hero. Um, but I don't know, I just think it's fun. Like, she's letting you kill other demons. Like, what does it matter? You just can't kill her, but you weren't trying to kill Lilith. She was minding her damn business. So, I don't know. Like, Cordelia being so upset, like, I get it. I get it, it's for the drama. But I'm also like, whatever. And then Lilith being like, not that big of a deal, I guess, is also a little bit like, what? Um, and yeah, the, the the demon princes continue to be like, not that big of a deal because these villains in her stories just tend to be like really ineffective. But let's get into all of the characters. So the main, and really the relationships, the main relationship is Cordelia and James. Um, I knew that one was gonna be good. So as soon as we set up a fake married plot line at the end of the last book, I was like, oh my God, so in it for this. And it was really fun. Like I kind of knew what it was gonna like happen, but it was cool and angsty to watch them continuing to be in love and like the chain, the bracelet that Grace gave him like slowly breaking until it finally broke completely. And at the end he like is like disgusted by Grace just because like, you know, she manipulated him and all that. I just was like, oh, this is so good. But then like, she runs off, she doesn't know, and I knew he wasn't gonna make it to the train for whatever reason, you know, and like, she's going with Matthew, and I knew Matthew was in love with her. I said that in the first um, book review. I knew there was some kind of tension, but there's not gonna be a full-fledged love triangle, because um, it's very obvious, like, she's not into him in that kind of way, and it's also, like, even the whole thing about, like, let's go to Paris together after he just professed his love for her. He's supposed to be going to Paris to, like, get over her, but now he's going with her, Matthew. Um, but I still, I dig, any kind of like unrequited love sort of situation. But yeah, like they're just whole like, she's not gonna know and like, how is he gonna get a hold of her in the next book? And like all of that, so good, so good. And they're already married. And I'm sure, I'm sure in the next book is when they're gonna like come back together, do their like their final marriage room when it's like official official, like when they're officially married, you know? Ah, I like it. Then next couple, I would say um, Ariadne and Anna. Oh my god. Um, they're, the, the tugging at my heartstrings is strong with those two. Um, especially because we got Ariadne's perspective in here a few times and just her being like, oh my god, I fucked up and like, it just being like so obsessed with Anna and Anna's continuing to be like a little brat and like I get it, um, but like when there's moments of like Ariadne being in danger or something, like her love for her comes out, I, I just can't wait for like Ariadne to probably again next book make some kind of like public declaration of her love or something. So it's really good. Another angsty one uh, is the Thomas Alistair. Oh my god. But now like Charles coming back in because he was like calling for Alistair when he was sick. Like leave him alone. Leave him alone. Um, but when they were like locked together because like Alistair had been following him. Like I knew nothing bad would happen with a whole like Thomas being accused thing. Although I did like keep reading through to be like come on. Um, but when they got like locked in together. And then Alistair's like, I can't be with you because, like, I, I hurt everyone. I, I can't. Like, that, so stupid miscommunication, like, you know, I, I, I just, I can't, you know, your friends hate me and we can't be together. And it's like, come on. Um, but I, I dig it. Again, I dig the, like, angstiness of all of that. And, like, is Charles going to try to get back with him? And then he realizes that, like, he really does love Thomas. And they're like, let's just start over. 
I would say Lucy and Jesse are probably like, I like them, but I don't, I don't know. Like this whole, um, him being a ghost, <laughs> like, and him being, he's still like way older than her. Uh, even though he wasn't like, he stuck at what, 17 or whatever. Like he's still been sentient for much longer. Uh, so he would really be like, what, 20 something now? Um, I know it's a different time period and whatever. And there's like a little bit of a loophole there, but I don't know. I do still like pull for them and I hope they like figure things out, but I love her. I guess I really didn't mention this. I do love her like necromantic abilities and like that whole thing was super cool. Um, and I just love that like she did like after the anchor was gone, um, which that twist was kind of cool. I will say this. Okay, I didn't mention that. The twist of like it being Jesse, I did not see that coming because obviously like I did think it was James. Um, so that was really cool. And I was like, oh my God. So now he's gonna like be up as like a full shadow hunter, you know, um, back from the dead. Uh, so yeah, I do think they're gonna like obviously end up together, but yeah, her having to like control her necromancer powers. I love that. I love the like any kind of death abilities, you know? Um, so yeah, they're not my favorite of all the couples. They're probably my least favorite, but I still don't hate them and I still do pull for them, but I'm still just like, I don't know. I don't know how much I can pull for a ghost romance, you know? But in the next book, he'll be alive. So that's fun. And I would say like fourth favorite, like above the Lucy Jesse stuff is the little glimpsey glimpse we got of Grace and Christopher. I kind of like it. And I think it's also like, it works out because Christopher's like so unaware of everything around him besides his like science stuff um, that if he does like get with her, which I'm sure he will, like I'm sure that's how that's what's gonna work out, um, that it's gonna be like, no one's gonna really be like offended by that. You know, they're just gonna be like, and yeah, like he didn't even pay attention to anybody until like this girl came around, you know? Like I thought that was cute. And like, she's definitely like, she, I thought that maybe she was even ace and like both of them could be even ace because she was just like, I'm so interested in any guys, but like, he's a guy that like, she couldn't, she also like couldn't really manipulate um, but more so just because he's like, I don't, I don't care. Like you don't need to like, manipulate me. Um, which I just think is cute. Um, so I, I, I felt more for Grace in this book than I did in the last one. Like we got a little bit more of like her, um, you know, working with Lucy and then this interaction with Christopher that I'm like, okay, get out from under your mother's talents, which she did, you know, she was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. Like do some, some good things here. And I feel like Christopher's going to be a really good match for her. Sweet. I continue to not care and be like very confused by the, um, I mean, there was a little bit less of like Will and Tessa in this one, but there's still a lot of like mentions. And then just like the mentions of Jem over and over just contradicts the epilogue of the Infernal Devices. It continues to, because in this one they were like, oh, you know, he maintains a relationship with all of you and like whatever. But in the epilogue, Infernal Devices epilogue, they acted like he hadn't seen any of them in years. And he's like, obviously always around. Like, pick one. It's so much more like torturous if he doesn't see them, you know? So them adding him in there like that is just very like fan service to me. Um, also like the continue, I mean, I get Magnus is always around, but I, I still continue to be weirded out that Magnus is like current romance in modern times is with the kid that's the like great, 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 whatever ancestor of the people he was hanging out with back in like, you know, Victorian times. Like I just, I think it's weird and it makes it like so much more obvious when you have him like hanging out with all of them, where it, at least in the Infernal, not Infernal Devices, the Mortal Instruments series, like you have some distance from that and it doesn't really feel real. Like this makes it real. Like stop doing it. I love Magnus, but like stop. I'm very curious what's gonna happen with this like Malcolm Fade, Lucy raising his like ex-lover. Is she really even dead? Was that all a lie? Uh, I don't know. Um, so yeah, all the relationship stuff in here, juicy. Was there anything else that like I'm leaving? I think that was everybody. I dig it for the relationship stuff, man. Like it's all just like campy sugar sweet goodness with angst. Uh, and I dig it. So I'm really looking forward to the last book. Again, those are my predictions for some of the things that are gonna happen um, in some way. Again, I knew that like every time she dangled James and Cordelia, um, like getting together in this book, I'm like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Come on, we know the formula here. Uh, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to that last one for all these couples and seeing how they're all gonna work it out because I know they all will. So comment below, let me know what you thought of this book and if you have any predictions for the final one. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.